Welcome to Ozarks Live. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah, good to have you back. You played golf yesterday, yes? I did. Uh, uh, the Missouri Sports Hall of Fame had yeah. a, a tournament, and luckily I, I was able to play. Had a great time. What a beautiful day yesterday. Good deal. You had yeah. fun, played yeah, well. I did. Good. I did. good. Came in early, recorded something, and then phew, took off like a herd of turtles. Yeah, I saw you early yesterday, briefly. Yeah. Anyway, um, I, I haven't seen you really until today, so I have to tell you about something I did over the weekend. Okay. Um, it was really super fun. I was asked to be a guest for an online cooking class, okay? I have a friend on the East Coast, uh, uh -huh. New Haven, Connecticut, named Chef Neil Fuentes. Okay, he's sometimes known as the singing chef. Uh -huh. And he asked me to be a guest on his, let's see, it was Mr. Neil's Mini Chefs Academy for little kids. Okay. okay. This was a real time cooking class. Um, and he and I worked together off and on at the Food Channel for a while. And in an hour on Saturday afternoon, he taught all these kids to make a full meal in real time and they made it with him. Take a look at this. So I used to, when I started cooking, I used to just experiment with food mixing this and this together to make this. <laughs> All right, well, let's start cooking. Are your kids ready? Joey, are you ready to see these kids cooking? I can't wait to see these kids cooking, Neil. I can't wait. All right, so guys, we're going to start. Remember, we're making today a full meal. Okay, and they did make a full meal. He gave them the ingredients beforehand, so moms and dads and everybody had the stuff, and then they went to work. That is as, so cool. Yeah, as Neil told them what to do, they got in the kitchen. They made chicken with rosemary and herb roasted potatoes, linguine carbonara, and this puff pastry with goat cheese, honey, and fruit. Wow. And then at the end, Neil also has a singing academy. That's him on the bottom, clapping uh -huh. and playing the keyboard. And he gave us a sneak preview of some of his kids' performance. So it was a super fun afternoon for me, late afternoon. Oh, nice. The only problem is that um, they all had food at the end of the hour, and I didn't and because didn't. I just sat there and yeah. watched it. And But, you know, I got to weigh in on some ideas, and, mm -hmm. they, you know, we could ask questions of them. They could ask questions of us. It was really fun. Now, see, that's something I would probably enjoy watching. I tried watching, you know, some of the cooking shows. You know, you have the British cooking British shows. British baking show, yeah. I, I watched one uh, uh, Sunday, I think it was, from Australia. Really? Yeah, and these Australian chefs... I guess they were bakers. They they made this meringue, and the audience went crazy. They were cheering and everything, and it really threw me because usually Australians boomerang. <laughs> Good one. You're full of them today. Ah. Yeah, he's usually sorry. Full of it. I'm, yeah. I really am sorry <laughs> about that. That's he not, threw out a couple I, before we even started the show today. So uh, yeah. So. And I read that. I didn't make it up. Oh, but I found take a way credit. to work it's it right fine. in. Just, no, 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 no. It's something that made me go. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's like, yeah, I'm, I won't. But did you it. really watch a cooking thing at all, or did were you? Just... I have tried, and I've tried watching the the the, the big dessert creations yeah. and things like that. And I I admit to the fact that that's artistry. Even the bad ones are better than I could do. Yeah. But it's like it doesn't hold my interest all that long. Okay. So I'll the... eat the thing, but I really don't care about all the you know all machinations the that go Oh, on. those kids were so talented. Oh, the kids I would watch because that's I cool. I loved it. All right, we have a great show for you right here today. We get to see Will and Bruce today for the first time in months. Yeah. So buckle up for speaking legal in dollars and cents just a little bit later. Plus, we get to catch up with Danny Lorton of Lucas Oil Speedway to see what they have going on this weekend. Yeah, and even after this weekend. Lots to talk about there, but before we get to it, we're going to show you what's on the radar. Okay, it's uh, pretty amazing the things you find in a vending machine, you know? Yeah. We've talked about that in, on the radar all the time. We have cosmetics, you see at the airport, cell phones and chargers, cupcakes, just about oh, yeah. anything, right? Oh, yeah. But um, there is one in Rochester, Minnesota that's got customers really talking. How about fresh meat? What? Yeah, McCann's Local Meats is celebrating five years in business with a meat vending machine. It's located in the store's vestibule, so if the main store is closed, people can still access their protein. It is stocked fresh and sanitized daily. Owner Kevin McCann says it's been especially well received. 
by healthcare workers and first responders who work crazy schedules and need to shop on their own time. But social distancing applies. People are asked to wear a mask. And please, only one person in the vestibule at a time. I think that's a great idea. I okay. mean, in, in truth, at first blush, I went buy meat out of a vending machine. But this is a meat company. They're doing it every day. How is it any different than picking some something up out of a cooler at a grocery store? That's not enclosed. Yeah. So and everybody's I picking guess. it up and looking and putting it back. So this really. Yeah, you, you go. Have that's to just, the one I want. The one you put your money. You yeah. yeah. So it's probably a good, well. Obviously, it's a good idea. It's it's going over well. Yeah, working for them. So I thought that was kind of interesting. If you you know yeah. you're like, I wish we had some pork chops. Well, I just go to the vending machine. You know, be kind of nice. 2 a.m. need those pork chops. I don't know. That's yeah. There's yeah. where it really goes in. <laughs> those yeah. That 2 a.m. I gotta have a pork chop. Pork chop run. Yeah. Right. Hey, you like to hike? Oh yes. Do you like to drink beer? Oh sure. You bet. You folks do. Can I do both? Well, uh -huh. if you said yes to both <laughs> questions, a brewery in Virginia may have the most perfect job ever known to mankind. Hands down, that's it. The Devil's Backbone Brewing Company, based in Lexington is looking for that certain someone to spend five to seven months hiking the Appala Appalachian Trail and drink beer. After being granted the title Chief Hiking Officer, the winning applicant will be outfitted with needed equipment and take his or her 2,200 mile hike beginning in May of 2021. Ooh. Not only will the hiker experience some of the most breathtaking views of our country, but they will also be treated to some of the most incredible beer parties along the way. The application, which can be found on their website, dbbrewingcompany.com, will ask for some personal information, proof of social media or blogging savvy, and a video explaining why the applicant should receive the position. The best applications will be selected for interviews and an assignment to compete for the next round of elimination. That's kind of a lot of miles, but... That's what you walk. That's That you would know. be fun. But you get beer all the time. Well, you know, if I... Makes you forget about those miles. If I applied and got the job, I guess I could just take my phone and my selfie stick and report back to Ozarks Live every day and let you know where I am. You need to do it because you're savvy in all of that and you do like beer and you hike. Cammy's the one that climbs mountains, though. Maybe it's her that needs to do this instead of me. True. I don't know how Cammy is on the beer thing, though. I'll just meet her at the beer stops. We'll both do it. There it is. I'll drink there the beer. She'll do the walk. We'll okay. see you I later. Love That's problems. next okay. May. Uh, exactly. I'm ready for it. All right. People found some interesting ways to pass the time during the pandemic, hiking and otherwise. But mm -hmm. here's one for you. An artist is really getting some attention for her take on snack food. Not that she's eating it, she is blinging it. She is bedazzling it. <laughs> Claire Hinchker doesn't Wait. just see spam, she sees bling. Look at that. She started adding rhinestones to her phone and her watch. Then she started blinging out things that she really loves, like Capri Sun, which, by the way, it is Capri Sun. It's not Capri Sun. I know. We Capri argued about this. It's Capri yeah. Sun. Um, she says she would walk down to her local bodega and just go crazy on the snack food. She says she really is a little bit too embarrassed to say how long she spent applying the thousands of rhinestones, but she hinted that just one can or bag can take about 12 hours. <laughs> and she doesn't eat what's in the bag, which really freaks me out a little bit. But her secret, resin crystals, <laughs> E6000 glue, uh -huh. pick up each jewel with a wax dip pin, dip it in the glue, and just do that over and over for eternity. Yeah. <laughs> it's the way she put yeah. it. And then you can bling out your Pringles cans. Notice she did the short cans. Yeah, I, I never Smart considered girl. spam a snack food, though. I, well, I don't know. I can't, well. Capri Sun. It's Capri Sun. And Fun Yuns. Fun Yuns. <laughs> yes, she did Fun Yuns, too. And she said she would really love to figure out a way to make a purse out of these or something. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Coming food. up, it's time for Speaking Legal <laughs> with Will Worsham. Yeah, so don't go away. Ozark's Live is just getting started. Be right back. <laughs>